Yeah, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just thought I'd uh, do a quick video with some ideas about what I am going to do over the next month or so. Um, I'm sort of conscious I've been a bit quiet over the last couple of weeks. Um, I've got several business trips over the next two months actually, which is going to be taking me in and out of the office uh, quite a bit. So I just want to sort of get a few ideas ready to go that when I am at home, um, I've got something to work on. So what I, what I am going to do is... Um, I'm going to start by doing a pan adapter. Um, I've had a few components turn up in the mail which will allow me to get on with that. So uh, a pan adapter, uh, I'm going to use, or for the pan adapter more the point, I'm going to use this um, this Teensy 3.5 from Paul Schroffrigan. Um, a fantastic little uh, microcontroller here. The microprocessor itself is an ARM Cortex uh, M4. Uh, running at 120 megs, uh, significantly more powerful than you would, than you would typically see on, uh, say, an Arduino board. Uh, and as a consequence, when you use Paul's very, very good uh, audio um, analysis library, I guess, or tool set that he's produced for this particular microprocessor, uh, you can do some pretty interesting analysis and, and effects. Uh, you, you need this little audio board here, which allows you to, once it's married up, uh, to feed in audio left and right here, uh, and then do all the manipulation uh, on the chip, and then feed it back out through uh, through the output there. So uh, that's the plan to use that as the as the as the brain, so to speak, and then have this display here actually displaying it out. So the pan adapter, um, uh, as you know, is is time is in the y-axis there, sort of coming down like a waterfall and then frequency along the x-axis. Um, it'll be interesting to see if I'll be able to do it um, using this. Uh, the Teensy will certainly be uh, powerful enough but uh, I've certainly struck problems before not necessarily with, with the Teensy but certainly trying to drive these uh, uh, these screens here that if you want to drive the whole screen at once and change every pixel then it takes quite a bit to actually uh, to write to memory. Um, so I may have to look to see if there's a way to potentially speed that up by maybe writing directly to the um, the RAM on the actual controller itself underneath the screen or, or some other way. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, if it turns out to be a total disaster, then I'll just go back to um, the sort of the scope style. Um, frequency along the, uh, the, the, X -axis, again, the, uh, the X axis and then just amplitude. Um, so frequency versus amplitude on the Y. Um, it's a bit like a scope display, so to speak. Um, so that'll be the plan there. Um, when I, once I've got this up and running, uh, the, the plan there would be to uh, use that um, on just any old rig. So uh, what you need there to do there is just feed that with IF, um, wideband IF that is. So uh, from our first mixer coming in with our local oscillator, uh, we've got a nice wideband IF there um, before it goes through the crystal filter uh, and then into the product detector. So after this bandpass filter here, um, which is you know typically that sort of 2700 or 2800 um, hertz, uh, it's it's too narrow band on this side. And if you want to be able to see a good swath of uh, your or the frequencies that have been received by the whole radio. We want to be on, on this side, on the wideband side. Um, now noting too that uh, in this particular arrangement here, uh, this needs audio coming in. So you know, if this was typically at 9 megahertz, then I'll need to have some kind of pick off uh, through a buff amplifier as not to uh, attenuate the signal too much going down this way, but to keep it more going that way. Uh, then they'll need to go through some other kind of um, detector there to, to drop that down to audio frequencies uh, with some kind of um, local oscillator there. So I'll probably have a look at that for a start um, and then look to migrate uh, the, the Teensy and the display which is here across to um, an SDR rig. So I'd use the same Teensy uh, to, to then basically um, create a, um, a software defined radio. So we go for a phasing technique there, so uh, two mixers coming in, um, not quite sure what they'll be at this stage of the game, uh, probably ADE-1s or SBL-1s, we'll see. 
Uh, we've seen just recently with the SI5351 that we can now create happily um, quadrature clock signals. So we can have one at zero degrees and one at 90 degrees, which then allows us with our RF coming in to produce on our 90 degrees side a quadrature signal and then on our, 90, on our zero degrees more the point, uh, our in-phase signal. Now because this Tensi here wants to see audio, this will be a direct conversion receiver here. So we'll have the, uh, the SI5351 running at the same frequency as our incoming RF to produce our audio frequency. Um, and then we'll feed that into the Tensi itself. Um, because it's going to be a phasing uh, rig, we'll need to add or create an additional 90 degrees phase shift between these two lines here before we ultimately um, either add them or take the difference to recover our lower sideband or our upper sideband. Um, so we'll look at uh, some ways to, to introduce that additional 90 degrees. Um, probably using, in fact we will be using um, Hilbert transforms, so we'll have another, another look at those. Uh, and as has been suggested, and go with one with an additional 45 degrees on that leg, go one with minus 45 degrees on this one, the difference between these two is 90 degrees, so we've now introduced our additional 90, um, and then over here we can do our our addition or our subtraction to recover our desired sideband. And like I say, this is all being done inside um, inside the Tensi. So that's that'll be the approach, um, and we'll cover it again in much more depth at the time. But you know the reason why we have both a, a 45 degree and a minus 45 degree Hilbert transform here. Um, is to get the same um, time delay. Uh, with a digital filter there will, be, there will be some time delay between the input and what comes out. So by having two identical ones we get the same time delay. So that at these points here we're still um, in phase so to speak. Um, by time that is. Anyway, so uh, that would be the plan to, like I say, migrate uh, this pan adapter should it work uh, through to the SDR rig. Um, to, to control the SI5351 and then to also um, display the output um, on the screen. So that's the, uh, that's the thinking, that's what I am going to do over the next month or so, um, which will allow me then to also tackle this radio here, which was built some time ago, um, which was a, an old SDR rig. Um, again, another Tensi 3.5 over here, and uh, just totally revamp that one. Um, in regards to these, these bandpass filters here, what I am thinking about doing is using uh, some filter blocks. So came across these um, a couple of weeks back, so I decided to buy a few just to have a play around with. So traditionally what I have been using to date uh, are these sort of standalone relays. Um, if I was to buy these relays from a local supplier, they're, oh gosh, I think they're around $6.50. Let's round it to $6, so pretty expensive really. Um, and I've sort of found out that I can purchase, for example, one of these, which uh, is a higher spec um, relay in terms of current, but it comes with a um, little MOSFET down there for, for switching it. Uh, you give it ground and VCC and then a logic level 1 coming out of a microcontroller, so notionally 5 volts, which will then allow you to switch this. Um, this costs $1. So for $1 I get a board which is all set up ready to go versus five dollars or six dollars odd for for a relay which I've still got to solder down so I've got to add in the um, the, the flyback relay there the say again diode um, and the like so I'm going to try some of those um, and then have all the switching for the various relays coming from the microcontroller as opposed to um, uh, an external 12 volts for switching these um, this is a subtly different version, so this one here has four of them all on the one on the one module there. So I can see that straight away being quite a nice way to switch um, some bandpass filters. Um, so I am going to look at playing around with those just to see how well they perform and if there's any sort of uh, downsides. But I think if I recall, this one here was four dollars fifty each. So um, Pretty, pretty good. Uh, you, you know, I, I can't, I can't beat that in terms of buying them individually. And like I say, one dollars for these. So I actually got twenty of those. So I've got a whole bucket for all those sitting around now, which I can use uh, for future builds. 
Um, uh, uh, now, something else too which came up, which I am going to look at over this, this build. Uh, in terms of this uh, SDR rig, um, it, it'll be a transceiver. So on the transmit side, in terms of the power amplifier, um, there's been, it's come up a couple of times now with you know, calling for ideas of, um, of things to build, is a, uh, a power amplifier from uh, W6JL. Um, if I recall, he has got quite a nice design. It's been, like I say, suggested a couple of times for a 50 watt uh, power amplifier. Uh, if I recall, I think it's um, MOSFETs, and I have a funny feeling I've also got them ordered. So, um, but suffice to say, you know, this has been a uh, desire for some, some, some of you to, to have a look at, uh, and that will be the intent. So the intent will be to look at uh, an amplifier from W6JL. Um, and I think that's pretty well all I was going to cover off on this one. So just, just an opportunity just to do a quick video, uh, provide a bit of an update on um, on the several, several business trips. So I'll be in and out of the office. Uh, but like I say, when I am back in, um, the plan is to, is to work on uh, a pan adapter uh, and then to work on uh, an SDR rig, having another close look at that. Um, I want to look at the logic here. Um, have another good play around with that. Um, have a look at this power amplifier. Um, and may even, we'll, we'll see, these also turned up. So these are some little monolithic amplifiers. Uh, what I order, five of those, little MAR-6SMs. Uh, so just some, some little ones there. They uh, they also turned up in the mail. So uh, may have a look at those. We'll see what happens. But they'll certainly go in the junk box for later on. Um, very inexpensive from AliExpress. Okay, so I'm going to say 73 is there, and um, like I say, when I'm next back in, uh, we will continue on and start the, uh, the pan adapter, and we'll go from there. Okay, cheers all. Have a good one.